So we were looking through Bust Magazine online. Ah, oh, Bust Magazine, yeah. yes. <laughs> and you were quoted as saying, they call it the glass ceiling, but I call it the brick wall in terms of being a female filmmaker. So what do you think are some of the things that make it tougher for women and what are some of the things that we can do to break down those barriers or maybe we're not there yet? Well, the thing that makes it really tough is that you don't get a chance to be uh, part of the club. You know, every business has its club that nurtures new young people who come in and somebody wants to pass on the knowledge. Well, nobody wants to pass it on to a girl in, in the movie business. They just don't, it, you're not part of the club. And if you're not part of the club, it's very hard to learn your craft. And it's hard to be an insider and it's hard to get to the place where you can even get a chance to prove yourself as a director. So that's why I call it a brick wall because there, there is very limited resources. Now that's not to say they're not, they don't exist because as you can see, some women are really breaking through in big ways. But generally, unless you have some kind of special in, you're not going to get there just by being good or being talented or doing everything right. It's just not there for you. So that's the brick wall and I think if you look at it as a brick wall and you say, well, I'm going to stop butting my head against this brick wall and I'm going to find another way to do this, that's where you go out and you find some other way. And for me, doing documentaries is the other way to do it or to do any of the other things that I do, like I direct in theater and, uh, you know, wherever else that I possibly can. And that's, that's my answer for myself. I think everybody has to find their own answer. but. That's what I've found. You said you think that maybe it's a system designed to make women fail? Well, right? yeah, you know, I, I really take that from uh, the comment that Amy Pascal made in the news the other day, or that she was quoted as saying that the system is set up for women to fail, and that's because that same thing, there is no process by which you can automatically move up the ladder. And that isn't to say that it's not hard. It's hard for men to move up the ladder too. But if you feel that you're a really gifted filmmaker and that that's what you're meant to do in life, then there should be ways for you to pursue that. And when you get out there and you don't find any ways open to you, that's, that's where the system is, is set up for you to fail. Right. Forgive me, I, I remember we had the conversation ahead of time when we were talking about the article. I didn't mean to put words in your mouth, but we were discussing that. How do you think that the system is designed for women to fail in terms of what Amy's article was? Well, about? even if you get a shot at it mm -hmm. and you don't have the support that you need in order to be successful, then the, the, the chances of failure are pretty big. And especially if you come onto a set where everyone's hostile to you. Um, you know, I didn't used to believe that that was going to happen. I used to think, well, you know, I'm a really good person to work for. People love to work with me. I can get on a set and, you know, every, I'll make everybody feel good and we'll all work well together. Well, the first time that I came onto a set of a commercial television show, I found enormous hostility hostility by men on the crew who wanted to do what I was doing and they had been laboring on this particular show for two years, three years and who is this chick coming in who's doing the job that I don't get to do and a lot of undermining went on and that was a bit of a shock to me. So the setup to fail exists out there. Right. I've noticed that whenever you do encounter hostility, whatever field it's in, it's usually because somebody wants to be right where you are. Exactly. And that's an interesting lesson. There's a select few of women that are allowed in. What do you think the difference has been? Well, you know, everybody has their own path in life. And some of the women that I know who are successful have come up through the inside of the business, come up as script supervisors, and in that way they've built a community from within that has supported them, which is, that's a wonderful way to come in. Others have been producers and have come in that way. And, you know, um, maybe 
uh, somebody has done some remarkable bit of work in the theater that has brought them to the attention of some major director who has been willing to help them uh, or has been an assistant to a major director. And I think that in those instances, there has been a man there who has been willing to say, yes, I will help this woman in. But without that, without that kind of mentor in the business, it's, it's pretty difficult. Do you think that's what interests you so much in hearing about these female jazz musicians is some of the parallels? I realize it was a different time then and racism played a huge part in their lives at that point. It still does, I'm sure, but it, do you think that's where you really felt a kinship? I did feel a kinship with them. I felt that they were going through exactly what I was going through. So it was, uh, when I saw that I said, hey, this is not just my story or the women's musician's story. This is the women's story. This is our story. And I think that one of the things that I would like to do is encourage women to make up their own world. You know, we have to hold up our end of the world and we have to create a world in which we work and in which we feel comfortable. And there are a lot of men who are willing to support us. I've had the support of many wonderful men on this project. But it's because we are telling our story and our story needs to be told. The world is out of balance and we got to help get it in balance.